everybody. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing. We're gonna be doing some healing for an elephant named Modi. This is one of the wildlife SOS elephants. I'm gonna read these goals here in just a moment. I wanna thank the client so much for this beautiful opportunity. This is very generous of you to book a session to support the healing of this elephant. Thank you for sharing with us here. We're going to learn a lot today. And if you're out there watching, you're interested in what I do, what I offer as a psychic session, you can learn more by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, I'm going to read your goals. We're going to get started. So you say, hi, Abby. There is a new elephant that is in need of healing. His name is Modi, and he is being treated by Wildlife SOS. He is in critical condition, collapsed. It doesn't look good, and he may not make it. But I would like to, off to try to offer whatever can be offered for his spirit and body. I know the caretakers are doing everything they can, and I would like him to know he is loved and cared for. Thank you so much, Abby. Okay, man, that's so kind. His soul's going to know that you did this for him. That's really kind of you. Just a moment. Okay, I'm going to relax, and we're going to take a look at this Modi, see what we can do to help him. <sighs> okay. It's weird. So it just kind of tastes like dust, and it's not necessarily like dust dirt. It's more like grain, like maybe dust that comes off of a type of food. I just taste what is like grain, grains. It's in the form of dust. I keep looking at the hips and the back of an elephant, the back legs of an elephant. It In the picture, it's really um, kind of goofy looking because there's a butt in my face. Like, I, I don't know, it, it just, it's very large, okay? And then its legs are bent at the knees and it just goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down and it's just like stuck in this position, okay? And I snap my fingers really loud and I hold the legs in place so the body is up. And the, the knees are just um, very wobbly. So then I snap my fingers and then the body comes down and I just lay the elephant down on its side. But the elephant doesn't feel comfortable laying down. So I take away the sound of discomfort and the elephant exhales I'm listening to the sound of the knees right now specifically in the back legs and it sounds kind of like a bees it sounds like a humming sound and buzzing sound and if I were to draw a picture of it just take like a golden um pen or marker and, and just like scribble it around randomly in there <laughs> like a fly stuck in a jar but it's like in the kneecaps there's just like this buzzing kind of moving around in both kneecaps and I snap my fingers and I stop time um, I'm going to tell you what the scene is there's just a little bit of discomfort here <sighs> It just feels like a very cold chill that hits me from my lower back coming from the left side and then it just comes up all the left side and it goes across and it goes up the right side. <sighs> and 
this is the scene that it shows me. I'm still looking at it, understanding it. It shows me that the two um, legs are cut off. So literally from the kneecaps, the, the knees down of both back legs are removed and there's just these stubs that remain. There's just a lot of discomfort around the back of this elephant. Like, um, I, and I really do feel it's not meant to be funny, although it's meant to be serious, but it feels like um, where the, the butthole is. Like, it just, it just feels like it hurts. It feels like it hurts. Um, the, le the legs hurt. The, the knees aren't strong enough to hold this up. The, there's just a lot um, going on back here. But we're supposed to work with the image where the legs are actually not there. And there's just two like nubs for legs. And I feel nothing but pain coming out of the back end of this elephant. Like, uh, like some kind of horrendous constipation. I'm telling you, it's like uh, somebody is, I don't know, like the, there's a knife in there. And it's very long and it's painful. And it just constantly feels like it never comes out. The knife or the pain never comes out. And it's just really uncomfortable. So what we're going to do is, again, remove the sound of discomfort. Because the elephant has to be familiar with what the sound of not having discomfort sounds like. So if I remove the sound of discomfort, then what remains is just silence. And silence is just like a, an energy clearing, okay? Of all the other sounds that are distracting and disorienting and difficult. This elephant... You know what this kind of, this is another image that comes to me. So, you know, daddy long legs. I have a lot of history with daddy long legs, like a big story of my life. Cause I was so curious about these spiders when I was little, little, I remember that these were the, I just needed to understand them very badly. And I would, I would pull their legs off and I would do these things. And I needed to under, because they were just so strange to me. I don't know, my childlike mind was just like blown away by this daddy long leg. What they looked like, how they moved, why they were brown, what they were. As a child, I was curious. And I feel like this elephant reminds me of me being a child doing these things to daddy long legs. It's like... Um, this elephant, you can't, once the legs are removed, you can't put it back on. You'll never be able to put the daddy long leg back together again. Once you start pulling it apart, it just doesn't come back together again. So what is it anymore? And so what is this elephant anymore? It's like, how are we going to reattach the legs of the daddy long leg? How are we going to re reattach this elephant with its, its health? It's, it's like a horse when um, the the leg is, is busted at the ankle. Like, it doesn't mend or heal. Like, if the horse cannot stand, it's done. Like, there's some kind of unfortunate phenomenons where we're going to have to accept that they're just... It, it, there's certain um, levels of uh, problem where it, it's it might not be it might not be feasible because I keep thinking of when it occurred to me what I was doing these daddy long legs I was mortified by myself and by what I'd done to them I stepped on them all like I just I had to put them out of their misery and I ran away and cried okay and it's almost like it would be a gift to put this elephant out of its misery. I, I, I'm really trying to um, see a light at the end of the tunnel where this elephant can be repaired. And that's what, that is what's coming to me as the next message, okay? I'm not convinced that this elephant can't be repaired yet, but that's the next message that's coming to me. 
because I, I am noticing now that there's so many um, tumultuous sounds around the head and the mind and the face. And I, it's like there's more of these golden kind of scribbles, okay? And it's hard to, like, it's hard to, to translate how we're going to repair this. Energetically, it says that, oh my gosh, how are we going to repair this? If I see even an idea where if we could put some of the um, cells of the elephant and some kind of a technology and to grow um, new legs or new, uh, new body parts, like that we could mend it back. We, we need to do something of, a, of an extraordinary kind to get this elephant back to, to a functional or even joyful life, you know? I feel like this elephant could be in a lot of pain. <sighs> because even after, like, those, when we remove the knees and the legs, which, you know, this is the energy world, we're, we're, we're altering sound waves. When we alter sound waves, it helps um, clear the echoes out of the elephant's being. So it's going to feel more harmonious and peaceful, and it's going to give the body more ability to heal itself, okay? And so once we remove these sounds out, um, and then we're going to start to see the legs come back again because it's going to start to remember how to harmonize its own energy. But my gosh, is that butt area un unfathomably uncomfortable. I can't even move up to the front of the elephant because when I try to do that, I see those scribbles in the face, inside of its uh, head and its eyes and all this. I see those scribbles, okay? And it's like, how are we going to neutralize all of this? Okay. I say, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let the critical condition um, get in the way of what we can do to help. So I'm going to just, it is what it is. What's the next thing we can do to help this elephant? Modi. I'm almost certain that was the name. I'm just going to go back and just double check it. Yes, how can we help Modi? What's the next step? Because we want to create comfort, we want to create harmony, we want to create um, repair. Um, I keep feeling like, like it's okay to see him as moving on. I'm going to choose to see that. I'm just going to choose to see that. Maybe that's the next step to recovery in this physical life, or maybe that's just to help his soul transition. His soul's stuck, and it's stuck in the heart area. It's stuck in the lungs. And his soul's very, 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 very confused. I circulate my hand around, and it's kind of strange because... <laughs> I'm doing it like this, uh, like quick, slow, quick, slow, quick. <laughs> I don't know. It's something about this. I'm supposed to do it like that. Okay. <laughs> so just, I, for some reason, this is like helping him come out of there, like helping him come out of there. <clears throat> come on, you, come on, you. And I tell him it's it's okay. I feel like you you need to get some soul level breath, and then let's talk about our plans here for Modi, you the elephant. Because let's get some soul level breath. Because this, I vibrationally, I'm looking at this, and it's almost like um, it's like a building where a bomb blew blew up and we need to take every little piece and slowly fit it all back together and then bam good as new and we'll, we'll take the super glue and it's gonna be great <laughs> it's like we need to start fresh here i don't know we got to start the same some new material so either we can repair the body the mind the spirit of modi in this life um or it, we start with a fresh new body kind of thing. But his soul having some breath out of this body is 
going to help. I say you don't have to be shy. And his soul energy is purple in color. He's really confused. I ask him why he's confused. I say there's an elephant named Modi. Here you are infinite energy. You are familiar with being Modi. But you're not Modi. You're everything. He's uh, relaxing now. He actually has a pretty good will to live. It feels like he wants to live because this is how it emanates to me. <sighs> Let's say you struggled and you lived in the gutter and you got a winning lottery ticket. And the same day that you go to collect your lottery money or whatever, you get in a serious accident with a semi truck. And your whole body is just a shattered mess in a hospital bed. And you're in a coma and you're, um, it's going to be a mess. Like, you might not even be able to move your arms or legs ever again. Like, we don't know what the repair on this one is going to be. And so, but you know you have a winning lottery ticket. Modi knows he's in an, in an environment where he is going to be happy and free. And that is a winning lottery ticket for him. But he is in this critical condition that you may just have to let that winning lottery ticket go. Imagine being a human being and living in the gutter and suddenly you're a multimillionaire with a second chance in life. Bam, hit by a semi truck and whoop de doo lottery ticket. <laughs> you got a mangled body now. So you can, so we're kind of in between here. He really has a will to live, I will say that. And I'm telling him, you know, this is, I, I'm telling you, I have no idea what to do about these hips of yours and the pain on the inside. I, I mean, I'm going to have to really investigate that. Um, these legs, especially the back legs, like we're really going to have to investigate this to try to start mending the energy. So um, where it's in um, decay, we, we can transform decay into creation. So we can start um, encouraging his own energy field to mend himself. So it's just getting the energies to shift gears. It's shifting gears from decay to creativity and um, life force energy. So we can do that. But he's got to be honest here. And there's something about the face as well. There's something about in the mind and in the face. He's out of his body for a long enough now where he's just kind of... This is the next thing. Because he's not um, existing in a will to live. Because he's taking some time to just look at himself, the elephant, outside of his body, as a purple energy being. And it seems to me that He just stares at his body for a long time. And we're talking like a long time, like two whole days. <laughs> and his body's not moving. And he's reflecting on the pain and the endurance and... There are some other beings that come and they show him some opportunities still in this life. But they also show him some opportunities in another life. He, what he got out of this lifetime, he learned some incredible lessons that really reached the core of his being. 
I keep seeing him as a, a rich merchant. Like um, a rich merchant from Aladdin, okay? Like the like that kind of environment. I see a, a merchant who is rich and wealthy and has very nice clothing and has um, extravagant um, gifts like jewelry or something um, more luxurious and more high-end. And he's, um, his soul's trying to learn about I guess you could call it wealth. What well? What is wealth exactly? You could have wealth of money and wealth of life, um, like a, a richly kind of up upscale life, or you could have wealth of good health, or wealth of um, people who love and and take care of you, wealth of feeling rescued. Um, wealth of feeling repaired after feeling broken the wealth of brokenness like he's learning about um concepts of wealth this is really uh, almost um shining a light into your eyeballs when you're trying to wake up in the morning it's just like too much of a wake it's just too much He needs time to really digest the meaning of this one. But he still wants to do it in the elephant body. Because he wants, he wants to finally get to live. And I see him back in the elephant body. This surprises me, by the way. And so let's just keep um, encouraging this. Let's keep um, creating a, a will for this soul to actually um, go through a difficult um, life experience and to know what it's like, like to be mended and to have an experience on the totally other end of a spectrum. It's almost like he wants to know what it's like to go from one spectrum to another spectrum in a single life. He doesn't, his soul does not want to give up on this one. He doesn't want, he wants to be able to know what it is like to, to win in the end is what it seems like. Find his way back to the wealth that he remembers from that lifetime as the rich merchant. Because it, it wasn't about greed. It was about having a skill that paid, paid the bills and gave him a lavish lifestyle. And he was able to support his family and have children, all that. It seems like it wasn't necessarily about greed. It just was a successful life, you could say. And reaching wildlife SOS is putting him in an environment that, that is um, a reflection of a successful life. That's literally what I'm being shown so far. Um, so let's just see what, what can I do to help in the repair of this elephant. He's sleeping right now. It's not time for the legs to grow back. I am placing um, a spirit of healing into his digestive region, is um, how he goes to the bathroom, how his hips feel. The lower half of him requires a lot of help. And it basically is like um, an energy liquid and vapor, and it's particularly green in color. And the green energy is, I guess you could call it neutralizing. It just feels like there's a lot of pain. I can't, every time I try to remove it, it just, 
it still wants to linger. So I try to remove it out of the back air, back end area. As in, I just silence it. Just silence it. No vibration. But it's something of this pain is helpful. Um, something of the pain is helpful. It, it, something in the pain is telling the body where it needs to focus its attention. Unfortunately, it also is painful. So the body, though, feels the pain, is aware of the pain, is getting uh, triggered about the pain, and the body then focuses on that area until the pain subsides. That's when you know that you're mended. And sometimes you're going to have to push yourself through the pain in order to mend, to get the mending to happen. And sometimes you have to push yourself through the pain to mend it. So he might have to push himself through pain in order to mend this. But if he has the will to live, then he could do that. It just feels like, imagine having sciatic and putting your back out at the same time. Like it, There's just this uncomfortable feeling. Like It just feels like the, there's a pinched nerve or the back is out. And then we're constipated like something ferociously bad. And the knees can't hold the back of the body up. Like <laughs> It's like, again, the car that gets hit by a semi. And now it's like, I am a, a mess. <laughs> I, I require recovery on like an extraordinary scale. But I still have my winning lottery ticket, dang it. I still have this wildlife SOS, dang it. So it's like you can see the parallel to what it would be like to be uh, Modi right now. Has his winning lottery ticket. Wants to know full spectrum um, what it can feel like to live um, on one side and now on the other side. Doesn't w Wants to get to that joy of, of wealth. So I amplify the sound of the pain instead of, oh, this lot of uh, cold chills across my lower back, up my spine, up my shoulders, um, down my right arm, into my hand. <sighs> So we just keep amplifying the sound of the pain because that's the sound that is actually going to attract the healing. And it's not a bad thing. This pain sound is um, what is required to get this uh, transmuted. Ask if we could, I'd really like to see him have legs again. It's still nubs back here. And they laugh and they're like, gosh, you, you need to work on patience, Abby. <laughs> his, his nubs are just, are just right for right now. <laughs> it's like, it's just hard to look at him like this. Okay, so I'm going to focus on the head for a little bit. I just keep seeing those golden scribbles. I touch the scribble with my finger and it basically represents scramble or confusion. I absorb it into my finger, take it completely out of the center of his head. I see there's a, a man inside of his head. And it's kind of down his neck and into his body, like right on down probably to the heart or the emotional gut of the elephant. And I just see a, a shape of a, a man that's basically a kind of a blackish energy blob kind of shape, but small. Hmm. I touch this as well with my finger and it actually kind of pops a little bit. It's very syrupy like, but it does um, act as though it holds something inside of itself and it seems to be seeds that are kind of sharp and painful. 
and um, it would be like swallowing, I don't know, like take a bite of a cactus and swallow it. It's kind of full of this. So I take all the spikes out. But the syrup isn't any good either. It's kind of toxic energetically. And what I do is I, I actually place sunshines into the syrup, literally like little, draw little sunshines and put happy faces and then emanate the warmth and the light. I do that. I place them inside the syrup. And the syrup starts to, like, um, it's acting like a zombie-esque nightmare that's convulsing and freaking out without sound, okay? It's like screaming without sound, but it's like convulsing and gnashing and, and de de deteriorating um, death energy. It hates those sunshines, that's for sure. The sunshine is like burning its flesh like a vampire in the sun is going to turn to dust, screaming, but no sound comes out of it. This is um, slowly calming it down. And it's kind of killing whatever that toxic energy is. Toxic energy is going to sleep into a death phase. And the sunshines are happily absorbing all of that suffering into their bodies. And the sunshines become spirits that leave the elephant between its face, its neck, and it's like down to its heart and right around the stomach area region. So that's kind of cleaned out of there. I just cry for this elephant. I just, I hug it like as best I can hug it. And I touch its skin and I tell it that it is loved and that it's going to be okay. And I stroke its head. And I tell it I'm very, very sorry. I'm so sorry. And the elephant really receives this nurture, like receives it. Like a glass of water after walking in the desert for freaking three weeks straight. It's like really receives it does not ne neglect it at all. Like, it's like, yes, absorb. <sighs> I see there's a kindness in the eyes. The elephant really receives the love that it receives at the Wildlife SOS. Like, the love given, the care given to this elephant at Wildlife SOS, the elephant receives it like a dry sponge soaking up water. Like the elephant receives it tenfold. Like the elephant receives it. <laughs> that is actually a ho hopeful statement. I start to see the recreation of the entire back end. Like, it's just like the old is pulled out and then a new is replaced. And some of the old comes with some like intestines and other innards. And when the new is replaced, it's all kind of re, um, it's like mended and, and together. It's blended together. So this is to help the, the elephant's body re like recognize what normal balance is, what healthy balance is. And it gives it basically a blueprint to recreate um, and to align with this, with this. And I see the elephant has legs now. And it's not constantly focusing on the pain there because it chose to receive and to participate and be in the pain, which is part of the healing, is not to resist it, to embrace it. You see, the elephant is sleeping a lot, like for eight days straight. The face, um, the head, the neck, and the inner area, the back area, it looks better, okay? So I'm just going to keep circulating this um, energy, and there's like gong sounds that are quite gentle. 
And it's just like a sound bath, a sound healing that is just like allowing this vibration to go through the elephant um, within and around itself. And the elephant is just resting and it is breathing. And so that is what I have to share. Modi is, uh, wow, I, I will be very curious what the outcome is here. There's no doubt the elephant is, as you say, in really critical condition. But the spirit of the elephant does have quite a will to live and wants to know what it can feel like to go from one end of a spectrum to a totally other and wants to know what the abundance of life with the wildlife SOS can feel like. It's a winning lottery ticket, so doesn't want to let go, wants to try to overcome this. So I feel like this healing is... Um, is giving Modi an edge. So you are giving this soul something to work with to help it manifest its own dreams. So that's pretty incredible of you to do that. And it, it is received. So thank you. And again, those watching, if you're interested in exploring a session with me, you can go to my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.